want you to be able to grasp all of this information. All right. So where we left off was that relationship is a matter of the heart. Okay. Relationship is a matter of the heart. Uh, that Christ came down to disrupt our love of religion because religion uh, basically is a, is a list of do's and don'ts, right? You can't do this. You can't do that. And that's why a lot of people have abandoned the church because they felt like there was an overzealous account on our behalf as the church of what they could and could not do, Um and we were more interested in the rules than we were in building a relationship with them, okay? Because that's sometimes how things happen in, in church life that we get so wrapped up in trying to, um, we get wrapped up in trying to learn, uh, try to make sure we maneuver people in a certain way that we forget that they're human, and that they're going through what we once went through once before, okay? And our job is to guide them, but not necessarily dictate, dictate to them rules and procedures and all of that and beat them, beat them over the head with it. So compassion is a big thing, okay? Religion also teaches a salvation based on merit or based on works, okay? Meaning uh, if you think about the Pharisees and the Sadducees, in Christ's day, and they walked around and they and they were prideful about how they lived their life. They were prideful on the way that they uh, washed their hands and the way they fasted and the way they prayed. And they prayed these big long prayers. Uh, and they believed that they were superior. Catch this. They were superior because of the way or the method that they choose to connect with God. So because they could read the Bible all day long and they could pray these long prayers and they fasted when they were supposed to and they prayed and they washed their hands and they went through all these ceremonies and rituals, they felt like they were closer to God than everybody else, okay? And so we know, we know that, that we live by a different system. Okay, we live by grace. Okay, we live by the grace of God. It is not of works that we can boast, as Paul as Paul said. It's not that we know God better than somebody else. It's not that we are um, because we can pray for ten hours doesn't mean that our relationship with God is any closer than the person that can pray for thirty seconds. Okay. Um, we live by the grace of God. We don't have a report card God. And what I mean by that is we don't have a God that's got a checklist in his hand and a clipboard that's checking off how many times you pray a day and how many times you fast during the year and how many times you attend church in a given year and how many, how much money you gave in the offering and how much you did this and how much you did that. We don't serve a God that does that. Okay, but our God is more concerned about our heart because there's a lot of people that do fast, that do pray, but their heart is not close to God. God is concerned about our heart. He's concerned not only that you pray, but the motive in which you pray. He's not more. He's not concerned that you fast, but he's concerned about the motive behind why you're fasting. Okay? He's concerned about why you're, you're reaching out your hands to other people. Uh, yeah, we're doing what the Bible says, but are we doing it from the love of God? Are we doing it from the right heart? Do you remember the conversation that Jesus had with his disciples in the temple? When he, told, when, when, when he saw that the, the people were given all this money in the temple, and then there was this one poor lady who had two mites, and she put in all she had. And, she's, and the, he told his disciples that she gave more than what they have because they gave out of their abundance and she gave all she had. That was, yes, it was about money, but it was also about the heart that she was willing to give everything and they were just willing to give whatever. So the heart is important. Relationships are important to God, okay? I got a scripture for you. This is... 
John 14 and 23. John 14, 23, it says this. It says, Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words and the word which you hear is not mine, but the father who sent me, okay? So here it is. Jesus telling us right here, you know, if you love me, if anyone loves me, he will keep my words. He said earlier in this chapter, if you love me, keep my commandments. So there it is. God, God is concerned about the motive in which you give. Here's another scripture in the same chapter. Um, as a matter of fact, let's, let's read that. All right. This is John chapter 14, starting at verse 15. John chapter 14, starting at verse 15. It says this. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray to Father and he will give you another helper. Or if you're reading the King James, it says a comforter. That he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. A little while longer and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live. You will also live at that day. You will know that I am in my father and you in me and I in you. He who has my commandments and keep them. It is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will be and I will love him and manifest myself to him. OK, all right. So here it is. Jesus talking. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Now, that sounds an awful a lot like religion, don't it? Okay? It almost sounds like Jesus saying, well, if you love me, you'll do what I tell you to do. Um, and that's true. I got another scripture for you. This is James chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. James chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. James chapter 1, verse 26, 27, it says this. It says, if anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Now, I'm going to read that same two verses. I'm going to read in the Revised Standard Version, all right? It says this, if anyone thinks he is religion, if, if anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his heart, this man's religion is in vain. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. Okay? Keep that in mind. Now, I'm going to go to I'm switch back to my New King James translation. We're going to um, Matthew chapter. Make sure I'm telling you the right chapter here. Chapter six. OK, now. In Matthew chapter six. God says, you know, and Jesus says, Jesus says, and when you pray, and then he'll say again, and when you fast, and then he'll say again, and when you give, okay? He speaks of these things in Matthew 6. Um, and I'm going to read Matthew 6 and 5, okay? St. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, it says, and when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. Surely I say to you, they have their reward. But when you, but you, when you pray, go in your room. And when you have shut your doors, pray to your father who is in the secret place 
and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Okay, so here's this. When you pray, when you fast, when you praise, it's not a duty. Okay, I'm going to say that again. When you fast, when you pray, when you worship God, whatever it is, it's not a duty. A lot of times we'll pray and say, well, I prayed this morning. Check. Oh, I fasted last month. Check. Oh, I, oh, man, we had some church today, man. I praise the Lord. Check. I went to church every Sunday this month. Check. Or, I, you know, I watched, I watched Pastor Downs, and then I went and watched Pastor such and such right after him, and then I watched this message after that. Check, check, check. Listen, it is, a, it is not a duty when we, when we do things for God, and we think we're doing them for him. It is not a duty. It is a privilege. It's a privilege to be in God's presence. It is a privilege to talk to God in prayer. It's a privilege to worship God in spirit and the truth. It is a privilege. And when we switch from duty to privilege, will our relationship with God will flourish. Let me give you another one. Many of us in the church consider our, our whatever our calling is or our assignments are on any given Sunday as a duty. Meaning, you know, I usher, that's my duty. You know, I, I'm a deacon. That's my duty. I'm a trustee. That's my duty. I'm a choir member. I perform my duty. I am this. I am that. I am this. I am that. Listen, no, it is a privilege that you get to stand on the doorpost of God. It is a privilege that you get to take care of the house of God. It is a privilege that God trusts you with the leadership of his house. It is a privilege that you get to, uh, that God gave you a voice to uh, enhance worship. It is a privilege, and we have to look at it not as our duty, but as a privilege. We get to do this for the Lord. I, I am thankful that in the morning I get to pray to God, that I get to, I get to read more about him, that I get to know more about God. It is a privilege. And a lot of times what ends up happening is what we do for God ends up being a chore. What we do for God, we treat it as a chore. And, oh, well, you know, we got to go to church. Oh, man, I, I got to get ready for service. Oh, man, I, you know, we, we, you know, it's my Sunday to usher. Oh, man, it, you know, you know, we got to sing again this Sunday. Didn't we sang again last Sunday. Oh, man, and we treat it as a chore when it is a privilege to do these things, okay? It is, we have to look at it as God has us on his team, and he wants us to, to represent him. He wants us to, and, and so because he wants us and he needs us because we are his body, what he does is it's a privilege that we get to do these things because guess what? He could use somebody else. I'm going to leave that there. He, he could, listen, he created you for that task. He created you for that job. He created you for that particular season that you're in. Look, God wanted you. You are his first and only pick. There is no second. God made you and put you on the planet to fulfill that role. He didn't have a plan B. You are it. And what happens is a lot of times we get in the chore mindset and God has to do other things or use other people. Have you ever seen somebody do something that was what you would consider outside of their anointing, but they did it so well and it was like, wow, and they can't even explain to you how they did it. But in that moment, God used them. And I believe it's in those moments where God used them because the person he really wanted to use was saying no. And a lot of times when we got to check our heart because sometimes God be telling us to do things and, and, and we have, God put it in our minds to do and we say no. And so then God used somebody else and you think, and, and listen, you validate it because you'll say, you know what? That was on my mind too. It was on your mind because God wanted you to do it. All right. Okay. <laughs> so it is a privilege. 
It is a privilege to study God's word. It is a privilege to sing praises to his name. It is a privilege to walk with God. It is not a chore. It is not your duty to get in heaven. It is a privilege that God knows your name and that God knows your heart and that God knows um, that you will be with him and you will stand with him. Can God trust you with the work that he has given you since you were born? Can God trust you to develop and cultivate the anointing that he's put on the inside of you? Can God trust you with whatever he's given you? That's how we build this relationship with God. When you're praying out of obligation, when you're praying out of obligation, is it considered prayer? I want you to think about that for a minute. If we was going to have a question of the night, that would be it. When you are praying out of obligation, is that considered prayer? When you're praying out of, when you're, pr when you're praying from a, from a point of, I got to pray, instead of, I get this opportunity to pray with God, is it really prayer? Um, that was a question I had tonight. Um, because we, we, we can't get in the religious attitude where I have to pray three times a day or else God's not going to bless me. That's not true. Okay. That is just as not true as you forwarding that stuff. They get, they say, you know, if you don't, if you forward this 10 times on Facebook, that God will send you a blessing tomorrow. No, God's going to bless me tomorrow regardless. Um, so we have to examine our heart in that. All right. I want to leave you with this. I, I see some of your answers. Let me, let me look at this real quick. Y'all keep typing. Um, somebody said a grateful spirit will bring about a privileged, um, state of mind. Um, somebody said no is because no, because it's not sincere. Um, I want to go back up a little bit. Um, uh, Someone says, so does religion have to do with doctrine or difference or the same? Now, when we think of religion, I think religion, when I hear the word religion, I think of doctrine. I think of method, all right? I think of, 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 of the method in which we use uh, to connect with God. Um, for example, uh, let, let's just use this I'm, as, from, from a relationship and religious standpoint. Okay, so your religion may say, if, if you don't attend worship and attend Bible study, you're not a Christian. You're not a real Christian. You're fake. All right? But you may, but then, and so you come to, weekly worship and you come to Bible study out of obligation because you don't want God to view you as a weak Christian. And here it is. You might be going to, to, to worship and maybe going to Bible study and getting nothing out of it. But then you read the Bible for yourself while you're at home and you're praying, not out of obligation, but because you want to draw closer to him and you get something out of that. That's that's the difference, okay? That's the difference. Um, I want to give you some practical things here and some scripture to go with it, all right? Here are ways to strengthen our relationship with God. We've been talking about relationship with God. We've been talking about a lot of multifaceted things over the past few weeks, but I want to give you some tools to, um, to build with on tonight, all right? So here it is, ways to strengthen our relationship with God. Communication, obviously, is at the top of the list, okay? Um, communication is at the top of the list. Uh, Romans 10 and 17. Romans 10 and 17. I got a couple of scriptures for this. Uh, Romans 10. This is a familiar scripture to you. So Romans 10 and 17, 
You probably got this highlighted in your Bible. It says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, that's I, this scripture is going to come up twice. OK, and you're going to see why in a minute. OK, um, communication with God. And we already read John 14 and 17, 14, uh, 15 through 17 earlier. Uh, talking about if you love me, you keep my commandments and, and I'll pray to the father. and He'll send you a comforter. All right. Communication with God, praying to God, come boldly before the throne of grace. Praying to God is communicating with God, talking to God, seeking God. And we talked about the different types of prayers like intercede, intercession and petitioning and, and all of those. Um, uh, thanksgiving, praise and worship and consecration. We talked about the types of prayer and how those things work. Um, so there's that. Um, but we have to make sure that our communication uh, us speaking to God. Now, can I tell you this? I'm going to say this. Um, we, when we speak to God, when, we, when we're connecting with God and those kind of things, when we talk about communication with God and we talk about prayer, communicating with God in prayer doesn't always, I want to say this in a different way. I'm going to say this in a different way. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to speak on a testimony for me for a second. It just hit me. I'm, I'm going here. When I found out that I could pray without being on my knees, it freed me. Okay? I'm going to say that again. When I found out I could pray without being on my knees, it freed me. And what I mean by that is, is when I found out that I can just talk to God anywhere and at any time, that I don't have to go, oh, wise and merciful God. And the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, Lord, bless the... Da, da, da. When I found out I didn't have to do that, when I can just be in my car and talk to God and be like, all right, God, here's my day. I know the day is going to be great. God, I command my day. Uh, I command my day to be productive. I command my day to, uh, to move. God, I know there may be roadblocks I know there may be uh, obstacles in my way, but God, with you, I know I can remove them. When I can just speak to God like that and I'm driving or I'm in the shower or I'm just walking around my house, that is communication with God. And I don't have to do that when I'm by myself. I can do that when I'm with a group of people. I can do that when I'm at work. I can do that when I'm in the car. I, like I said, I can do that walking around. That freed me because then I realized I can communicate with God anytime. If I find myself in a situation, I can talk to God right then and there. Just talk to him. And I can talk to him just like I'm talking to you all. I can just communicate with him, and I know he hears me because he created me to communicate in the way I communicate. Now, listen, maybe you speak the king's English. Maybe you speak with all the these and the thous and the thanks and the thanks and, and the ain'ts and the whatever. If that's you, that's how God made you. All right, but for me, God didn't create me that way. So when I pray, I don't always pray with my head bowed and my eyes closed. Because if I pray with my if I'm driving and I pray with my head bowed, my eyes closed, my prayer is gonna change. <laughs> because I'm gonna find, I'm gonna connect with a telephone pole, or I'm gonna connect with a ditch. Um, and my prayer is going to be like, Lord, send an ambulance. <laughs> but when I found out that there was a multiple ways I can connect with God in prayer, that thing was so powerful to me that I can talk to God anywhere and at any time and that he hears me. That I don't have to necessarily wait till I get home and wait till I can close the door to pray. I can pray anywhere. I can pray at any time. That freed me. Man, that, that was freeing, okay? So communication with God, that's a way to strengthen our relationship. And I would say communicating with God often, okay? And true communication with God. Don't be fake about it. Listen, if you're upset, let the Lord know you're upset. If you're, if you're doubting something, if, if you're wavering and you don't feel so sure, be like, God, I'm not sure about this. God, I'm struggling with this. 
God, this hurts. God, I mean, listen, I've said this before. God can't heal you if you don't acknowledge that there's an issue. God can't heal you if you don't acknowledge you're sick. And God can't solve a problem that you don't consider a problem, okay? Or acknowledge that's a problem. Go to God and be honest and like, God, I don't understand this. God, I listen, God, I've been praying for everybody else, and I I I've and I've been seeing everybody else blessed. And God, you know, I've been on this wall for a long time, and I need your help. Listen, pray. Pray those things. Ask God to help you. Okay. Be honest with God. Be honest with him. That's communication. Okay. Um, listening for him. Taking time for God to respond, okay? So communication is one. Two is taking time for God to respond, listening to God, all right? I got a scripture for that. We're going to John 8, St. John 8. St. John 8 and 47 says, he who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you don't, therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. I'm going to read that again. He who is of God hears God's words. He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Now, let's, let's read that in context, okay? Um, Let's go back to verse 37, read it in context so we can get some understanding of what Jesus was saying, okay? Verse 37 of John chapter 8, uh, it says, I know you are Abraham's descendants. He's talking to Pharisees, right? Um, he says, I know you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have seen with your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I hear from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we are not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he who sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my words. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convict me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not come to believe me? Verse 47, he who is of God, hears God's word. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. So that's interesting how um, how he lays that out. All right. So that's listening to God. All right. So let's look at. Uh, so here's what we have so far. We have. Um, we have communicating with God, all right, communication with God, and then we have listening to him, taking time to listen to him. So let's talk about this. Um, I got more scriptures to go with this, and we're going to jump on that too. Um, but a lot of times when we pray, we're just praying, and we're not necessarily seeking God uh, to hear what he has to say on the matter. We don't take time to just pause, to listen. Now, when you take time to listen, 
I, I want you to think of this for a minute. When you take time to listen, it doesn't mean necessarily that God is going to speak to you at that moment. Okay? This is what I mean. Sometimes when you pray, just take some time to be still, to not do anything. Just quiet your spirit and your soul. Because when you do that, you put yourself in a position to hear. And God might not speak to you right then, but I promise you, if you spend enough time in a quiet place with God, and you just spend some time quiet, God will speak to you. Because your soul will be in, your spirit will be in position to hear what God has to say. That is the key. Okay, that is the key. All right, I got another scripture for you. Um, Proverbs, actually, no, let's not go to Proverbs yet. Let's go to John 10. Since we're in John, let's just flip a couple of pages. This is John 10 and 27. John 10 and 27, it says, My sheep hears my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I will give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. All right, and we'll say it and we'll read that again. My sheep hears my voice. It's Jesus talking. My sheep hears my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. All right, so Jesus says that we are his sheep. And his sheep responds or hears his voice, okay? That's very important, all right? I got one more scripture for you pertaining to this, and this is James 1. James 1 and 22, okay? James 1 and 22 says, Be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. Hmm. Read that again. Be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. I won't keep reading. It says, For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. But he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Okay? And that then that connects to what we read earlier. All right? So here it is. Be doers of the word. And not only just hearers, He's saying that, we yes, we got to listen, but our listening should lead to action, okay? Um, so communication, listening to God, being in God's presence, okay? Being in God's presence, uh, remembering his presence, because here it is, God's presence is everywhere, okay? God is always there. Um, Romans 8 favorite chapter, Romans 8. I'm going to verse 38 of that chapter. This is Romans 8 and 38. It says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing shall be able to separate. All right? His presence is always there. Um, got another scripture for you. This is uh, Proverbs th uh, 3, 5 through 7. And I know the scripture. I don't really have to look it up. But I don't want to misquote it. 3, 5. All right, Proverbs 3, 5 through 7 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. In all your ways acknowledge him. Why does he say that? Because God is always there. So you might as well to acknowledge that his presence is always with you. That no matter where you go, God's presence is with you. 
Okay, very important. Um, Psalms 23 and 4, uh, very familiar passage, right? The Lord is my shepherd. All right, let's go there real quick. This is uh, Psalms 23 and 4. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me, your rod and staff, they comfort me. Okay? You're always with me. So I, because you're always with me and I acknowledge that you're always with me, I have no reason to fear. Okay? Interesting. All right. Two more. All right. So ways to strengthen our relationship. Communication. Listen to him. Remember his presence. Reading his word. Read his word. Okay? Um, I have a couple of scripture references here, but I'm only going to go to one. This is Hebrews um, Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4 and 12. Hebrews 4 and 12 says, For the word of God is a living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, I can go a whole Bible study on this verse, but here it is. The word of God is, a live, is living and powerful. It is living. It is life-giving, all right? Um, and, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, all right? So when, when we read the word of God, we got to remember that the word is powerful, okay? Also, we got to remember that reading the word of God allows us to know more about God, more about his nature, more about his actions, more about what he does, more about how God is going to move, how God is going to respond in certain, how God responds in certain situations, all right? It's all in the Bible, Reading his word, okay? Um, we've already read that we should not just be uh, readers, but hearers of the word. And we also remember that um, the scripture that we read earlier, that without faith it's impossible to please God, uh, and that um, we got to be able to hear the word of God, all right? So uh, there's that, okay? I got one, and the last one. Okay, communication, listen with for uh listen for God, take time to pause in his presence, to remember his presence, that he's always there, to read his word, to learn more about God. And the last one I want to share with you is never stop growing. Okay, never stop growing. Never stop growing. Um Philippians 2, 12 and 13. Now, here's this. A relationship, any relationship grows. Relationship is growth, okay? Relationship, it, it grows into maturity. Relationships are, are living uh, and breathing. It, it moves, all right? Relationships are powerful because they're almost like living mechanisms that just as something that's living grows, your relationships grow. And hopefully, your relationship with God grows. Um, some of us have been in church all our lives, but our relationship with God is still on the same level it was when we met him. No, your relationship with God should grow. I tell people all the time, you got you to know, you got to have Jesus on a first name basis. You got to have Jesus on a first name basis because some of us know Jesus as Mr. Christ instead of knowing him as Jesus. All right. We got to, our relationship with him should grow. Um, Think about it. Some of you know me as Pastor Downs. My students at school know me as Mr. Downs. But their relationship and your relationship with me is different. Just like the people who may call me Pastor Downs is different from the people who call me Daddy or Husband. So our relationships have different ebbs and flows and different uh, connotations. The people that know me as Mr. Downs like telemarketers who may call my house who don't know who I am is different from the people who call me by my first name 
or call you by your nickname. Some of you might have had nicknames that you had depending on where you lived and where you was from and, and those kind of things. And if they call you by a nickname, you know, oh, that's somebody I grew up with because don't nobody know me by that. Or that's somebody that, you know, knew me when I lived at such and such, right? Because of the relationship, all right? So here it is. Your relationships should never stop growing. This is Philippians 2, 12 and 13. It says, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. That's a good way to stop tonight. Hey, I'm going to read that, that scripture one more time. It says, therefore, my beloved, as you have obeyed, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. All right. So here, here are the five ways to strengthen your relationship with God. Communicating with God. I would say communicating with God more often. Listening for him, taking time to pause and reflect and to listen to God, to steal your, your mind, your body, and your soul, to listen, um, to remember his presence, that God is always with you. He's always there to acknowledge his presence, uh, to read his word, to develop uh, more about him, to learn more about him, and to never let your relationship grow stale, never stop growing. All right, continue to walk in the things of God. Continue to develop the things of God. Continue to, to mature in the level of God. Um, as, a, as a preacher, and this will be the last thing I share with you tonight, that uh, as a preacher, I've learned that I'm, I'm stronger when I pray more. And what I mean by that is, is uh, I can study all I want to. I mean, I can study all I want to. I mean, I can have all these scriptures laid out. I can have, uh, I can have stuff. I can have information for days because I'm a researcher and I love to research and, and I can find information. That's, but when I spend time peacefully, still with God, it seems like things are more powerful. That my connection with God is secure. And the download is a lot easier. Now, sometimes the download is choppy because I can't handle but so much at one time. My spirit is starving. But when my spirit is full and I've spent that time in God's presence and I spent my time in quiet listening to him, I've learned to do that more than research and read. Because I've learned that God would download stuff in me that I can't find in a book. God will download stuff in me that I hadn't even experienced yet. That God will download stuff in me that's, that you need, regardless of what I was planning to preach that day. So I've learned to spend that time quiet, close the books, listen to what God has to say. Listen. Some of you might have some decisions coming up. Some of you may have some things coming up, uh, going on in your lives. And listen, all of us are exhausted. Oh, my gosh. Just the, the news uh, and, you know, and all the, the, the things we've been going through as a nation the past few weeks. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. And right now is the time when we need to spend more time in God, spend more time in his presence. Um, Jesus said it like this, come unto me, all who are heavy laden, who are burdened and heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He said, he'll give us rest if we come to him. And so we have to learn to be still. God to give us peace when we're in his presence. And I learned that the download that God has for me is so much easier. So much easier 
when I spend that time in my quiet place. Listen, so I don't know who that was for. Some of you got some things coming up. Some of you are dealing with some, some issues. Some of you are dealing with some things with family members and, 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 and this, that, and the third. And you might be like, God, what is going on? And listen, we are all looking at 2020 going, Lord, what is going to happen next? This is the time we need some peace. Let's get after it. All right? Let's get some peace. Um, I'm going to pray. And then I have a couple of announcements that I like to give on tonight. So let us pray. Father God, we are so thankful tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you're blessing and keeping us. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you, God, that we are blessed and we can call ourselves blessed tonight. Lord God, many of us are tired. We are exhausted in our minds and in our hearts. God, I, we can't take any more of you. Lord God, give us peace. The peace that your word says surpasses all understanding. God, we should be crazy, but we got peace. We should have given up a long time ago, but we got peace. We want that peace, God. The peace that says, even though I had every reason to quit, I didn't quit. God, give us peace. Thank you for your mercy, your grace, and your love. God, continue to speak to our hearts and our minds. Steal our body. Steal our minds. Give us stillness. So we can hear you clearly. Use us, God. Show us the way. Show us the way, God. We make ourselves available to you. Show us the way tonight. Lord God, there's some who need healing, God, in many different facets and different levels. And God, we believe that by your stripes we're healed. We thank you for your loving guidance. We thank you for your strength. Continue to bless us as we learn to honor and obey you. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to go through a, a few things with you tonight. Of course, as always, uh, if you desire to give tonight, you can do so by using the cash app at dollar sign EBC39. You can also uh, participate in curbside giving on uh, this Sunday from 1 to 2 p.m. if you would like to uh, bring cash and a check and to get some envelopes. Um, also, you can mail a check to our physical location, uh, which is listed there. Um, Ebenezer Baptist Church, 220 Austin Street, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29301. Of course, this is Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, you can join us on Sunday morning at 1115 um, as we um, deliver the word of God uh, in our Sunday virtual worship. Amen. Um, I have two announcements that I'd like to give to you tonight concerning our church. Uh, the first announcement is uh, that while you're going grocery shopping, if you desire, uh, we would like all our church family uh, to help us in something that we're, we're trying to do at Ebenezer. We're going to ask that you, um, as you shop, if you can, if you can, uh, buy a couple of non-perishable food items uh, and you can bring those to the church uh, during our curbside giving hour from one to two. Um, and what we're going to do is basically fill our pulpit with food. Okay. And like I said, non-perishable food items. All right. But what we're going to do, we're going to stack it in the pulpit and we're going to fill our pulpit with food as we begin the process of starting a food pantry um, as an outreach arm of our church. Uh, it has been on something that's been on my heart for the past couple of months while we've been experiencing COVID that we know that food has been an issue, not only with our community, but even within our church. And so we want to set up a, a way to where we can be a blessing um, and where we are fulfilling the mission, the, where we're fulfilling the mission work of the Lord in our community and in our church. So uh, if, if that is speaking to you tonight, 
I'm going to ask that you do that so that way we can be a blessing. We are set, we are setting up the building blocks of that now, um, and we'll definitely give you more information. Um, as we, uh, every day, we are blessed in our efforts to do what God is calling us to do. Um, and it's amazing how when God spoke it to me, uh, one of the things I'm learning as a pastor is that just because there's a need doesn't mean I personally have to answer it. Um, I may not be equipped to answer it, but there is always someone around who has that answer. And that answer was in our church. And I'm so glad that people are, are, are listening to God and stepping forward. Um, and God is moving in that, in that spectrum. So if that is speaking to you, just bring it by during the hours of one and two, and, um, we will put it on the pulpit. We're hoping, uh, that as we prepare for re-entry in our church, that uh, when you do come, you will be able to see what we've been collecting uh, and how much of it we've been collecting uh, so that we can begin the process of distributing that to people who have a need, not only in our church community, but in our community uh, as a whole outside our four doors, our four walls. <laughs> now, the last announcement I would like to give tonight is a congratulatory announcement. Uh, we have an elevation and promotion from one of our uh, church members, and I'm excited about this uh, because, as I've always told you, that God is a God of multiplication. Uh, he is uh, expanding our horizons and our spiritual footprint, and many of you that pay attention to me, I always pray that God expands our spiritual footprint, and this is one of the ways that he is doing so, and so we want to congratulate Minister Kenneth Clyburn on tonight uh, from the Ebenezer Baptist Church. We want to congratulate him as he has uh, been selected as the pastor uh, of Mount Carmel Baptist Church in Spartanburg, South Carolina. And some of you might be scratching your head and going, Mount Carmel, why does that name sound familiar? Because it is the church that is next door to our church. And so our neighbors, uh, we will be neighbors now with uh, Minister Clyburn as he moves on um, into the pastorate role in that ministry. And so we are excited for him, um, but we're also in much prayer for him because we know that he will need our prayers, uh, he will need our support, uh, and anything that we can do from Ebenezer Baptist Church to support him, we will, um, because he is our neighbor and he is also one of us. And our family is just expanding. Now we have cousins next door. Um, and so we are excited for what God is doing in his life uh, and his family's life and for the life of that ministry as they are in the process of reviving and building up. So we know that the devil is busy, that even though we're excited, the devil's not excited. And so we're going to pray with him um, and we're going to be in much prayer with him as he begins that process and uh, after we get over this COVID uh, stuff, we'll be able to uh, formally celebrate with him and his new church family. And we are so excited for what God is doing because God is definitely doing the multiplying and he is doing great things uh, in the body. And we are just so grateful for what God is doing. So when you see Minister Clyburn, please tell him congratulations. Give him, uh, I would say give him a hug. <laughs> Can't quite do that right now. But we are so excited uh, for what God is doing in his life. And we are truly celebrating um, with the expansion of God's kingdom. That is powerful. So um, blessings to him and to Ruth and, and to uh, the family. And, and we just praise God for his elevation. I knew it was going to happen quick. I told him and, and I announced it in church that when we licensed him as a minister, that his phone would ring and that... Um, People will be calling, and sure enough, it hadn't even been six months, uh, and and that has happened. So um, God is truly uh, doing an amazing thing. I'm so glad that you was able to stick with us. We're sorry for the technical difficulties on tonight, uh, but we know those things happen. Um, so just keep being in prayer and continue to grow in your knowledge and relationship with God, and I pray that you have a blessed Wednesday. And we will see you all on Sunday. God bless you all. Have a good evening.